In 2019, Team Bath Drones consists of seven final year undergraduate engineering students from the University of Bath, with students from mechanical, aerospace and integrated mechanical and electrical engineering courses. Team Bath Drones' entry to the 2019 IMACI UAS Challenge, Kalos, is a VTOL hybrid system which is modular, allowing for the aircraft to be operated in either VTOL capable configuration or in fixed wing only configuration, depending on the situation. For the competition, the fixed wing configuration will be flown to maximise the capability of the aircraft in the competition scenario. This configuration of the aircraft is catapult launched and belly landed and is capable of carrying up to 2.8 kilograms of aid payload distributed between two payload bays, as well as carrying the image recognition systems. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 6.9 kilograms. The aircraft features a 2.2 meter wingspan with a blended body fuselage with pitch control provided by canards and elevons performing pitch and roll control. Your control is achieved through differential thrust from the rear motors with 12 by 8 inch folding propellers. The two 4-cell lithium polymer batteries in parallel are used for the propulsion system and both are used to power the systems for redundancy. Kalis can achieve endurance of over 10 minutes with a range exceeding 10 km and flight crew speeds between 15 and 33 meters a seconds are possible. A hardware safety key is included to allow power to be isolated from the motors when the aircraft is on the ground. Autonomy is provided by a Pixel 2.1 autopilot system and peripherals including a HEAR 2 GPS, a PITO 2 for airspeed measurements and a LiDAR for accurate range finding during landing. Telemetry is transmitted over 433 MHz to the ground control station and a FR Sky X8R receiver is used for manual control over 2.4 GHz. These radio communication channels are in compliance with Ofcom regulations for power limits. Ground Control Station runs Mission Planner and is used to plan the aircraft mission as well as provide continuous real-time data on the flight. The transmitter can select the appropriate flight mode using a three-way switch. This allows manual control, where the RC input is passed directly through to the control surfaces, fly-by-wire A, where the autopilot applies PID gains and attitude limits to the RC input to provide smooth flight, and auto, where the aircraft operates in fully autonomous mode. The transmitter also features the FTS button should any anomalous behaviour be identified in flight. When activated, FTS cuts the motor throttle and places the aircraft into fly-by-wire A mode with predetermined control surface deflections to allow an unpowered, controlled spiral descent. The efficient aerodynamic design provides excellent glide characteristics. A laptop with Mission Planner installed is used for real-time telemetry monitoring on the 433 MHz link, mission planning and autopilot control. The laptop is placed in a shelter to improve the screen visibility for the operator. Every flight includes a geofence which initiates FTS if crossed. FTS is also automatically activated if the telemetry or RC data links are lost for more than 5 seconds. Our team member Sam has been responsible for test flying the aircraft for the past several months and has completed takeoff, navigation and landing manoeuvres in manual, fly by wire A and autonomous flight modes. The catapult itself is divided into three sections to improve ease of transportation. Additional components are the legs, 12 volt battery to power the winch and the safety key and pedal box to improve safety of operation. Wind direction is checked and the catapult is moved and set to the appropriate takeoff direction. The pedal is covered and the catapult is initially pulled back to latch onto the release mechanism. Then the safety key is inserted to prevent unintended release. The aircraft is prepared following the pre-flight checklist to ensure all systems are correctly functioning before flight, including checking structural integrity, control surface response, GCS connection, rangefinder checks and battery cell voltages. The aircraft is placed on the catapult and armed by the ground control station. A final eventualities check is conducted to confirm the mission plan and any action that will be taken in the event of flight anomalies. When ready, all personnel move behind the aircraft, the catapult safety key and pedal box are removed and the pedal is activated, launching the aircraft. The aircraft detects the acceleration of launch and climbs to the desired altitude before beginning the mission. The aircraft follows predetermined waypoints at a set cruise speed of 20 meters per second. 
For the speed run, this is increased to 28 meters per second to keep the aircraft under the 60 knot competition speed limit. Payload drop is carried out by reducing altitude to approximately 40 feet and airspeed to 15 meters per second to improve the accuracy of the drop. The payload rests on a hatch suspended by a servo motor, which retracts to release the payload. The door opens into the airflow, which pushes the door closed once the payload is released and the door is held in place by magnets until the servo rotates back to hold it shut. Imaging is performed by a Basler A-Series camera and processed by a convolutional neural network run on an NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Each image is geotagged using GPS location data from the Pixorg and offsets determined from the location of the target in the image, and this data, along with the identified letter, is sent on a dedicated 433 MHz telemetry link to the ground control station. The aircraft can automatically belly land within a 30 meter box and uses a LiDAR rangefinder for height above ground during the final descent. After landing, the aircraft is disarmed from the ground control station. The aircraft is approached from the front to avoid the propellers and the safety key is removed and the batteries unplugged before moving the aircraft. Kalus has proven to be a reliable UAS and all aspects of the competition flight have been achieved. We are working hard to improve the performance of the aircraft and are looking forward to competing at the 2019 iMacE UAS Challenge in a few weeks' time.